Welcome back to Decision Made EU, our live debate, pulling in the thoughts and opinions, some of them pretty strong, as we've been hearing so far from guests in our studios in Bristol, Leeds, Cardiff and Sunderland. Now, you've got a short time to make up your mind on what is a vital call for the future of our country. Is it best to stay in or leave the European Union? Well, UKIP are, of course, one of the main drivers of the Brexit campaign. And joining us tonight, we have their national spokesman on trade. He's also the UKIP MEP for the South West, William uh, Dartmouth. William, good evening, uh, welcome good to evening. the programme. Thanks good for joining Thank us. Thank you. Uh, Thank you for inviting uh, me. Asking for your uh, Remain vote on Thursday, a passionate campaigner for the EU cause in our Tyne and Weir studio, Paul Wyndham. Hello, Paul. Hi, Steve. You all right? Great to see you. Let's start off, first of all, uh, with William uh, Dartmouth, who is a man who knows the workings of the EU. Uh, well, who, well who knows the I think you're flattering me. I think you're flattering me, but still. <laughs> well, if, I, I'm hoping you know slightly more than we do yeah. anyway. Let, let's put it that way. When you're talking about pulling out of the EU with all of the weight of expert opinion and everything else and walking this lone line, isn't it walking into a nightmare? No, absolutely not. First of all, let me make one fact absolutely clear, which is that, which is that should we, and I hope we do, vote, vote to leave on June the 24th, we're still in the European Union. What the government has said they're going to do is they're going to, to invoke Article 50, and we will remain in the European Union for another two years. Mm -hmm. and, and that provision was put in the Lisbon Treaty, which incidentally UKIP and, and, and lots of other people in this country opposed, specifically so that if somebody did leave, there wouldn't be a massive dislocation. So what you've been hearing from the Remain campaign uh, it, it, it is simply not true. Well, now, as far as lonely is concerned, as far as lonely is, as far as lonely is concerned, we are a member of over a hundred international organisations, including having a permanent seat on the UN Security Council, mm. which incidentally, so long as we're the EU, is under long-term okay, threat. Well, and also, we immediately, and this is the key point, okay. we immediately reactivate our seat on the World Trade Organisation at such time as we leave. Yeah. But it won't be for two years plus. Okay, so, the, the, that two years there was a state of limbo, isn't it? No, uh, no, it's not even remotely. We're, we're, well, you of course, of course it is. Of course it is. No, 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 I can't agree with that well, characterization. The, inevitab the inevitability of what's to come afterwards has to be sorted out. Let me just ask you, and this is a question that a lot of people, and seems to be quite fundamental when it yep. comes to trade and economy. How long would it take you to negotiate the kind of trade deals that, the, that we've got in this country with countries in the, uh, in the European Union if we started now from scratch? How long would it take? To do well, that. well, two points. It takes the trade. It takes the European Union an inordinate amount of time. E. How long will it take us? I'm to, just telling to, to you. Redo I, those? Can I answer your question? It's a very good question. It deserves. It deserves a proper answer. It takes the European Union an enormous amount of time, because there are 28 member states, mm. and the European Union Trade Commissioner, of whom I've been deeply critical, nonetheless has the very difficult task of satisfying the interests of all 28 member states. If it was us, it would be much, 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 much straightforward. Why? There is also a second. Why? Question. Why would, why, would, why would it be much more straightforward? You've got to deal individually with 27 other countries, haven't you? So, sorry, sorry. You said outside countries. Now, no, on the contrary, when we leave the European Union, mm. we, we only will be negotiating with the European Union. They've got 27 member states there, but all their trade falls under the purview of the European Union mm. Trade Commissioner. Okay. So, so, so we don't negotiate well, with one of the 27. Now, I thought you were asking about other countries, and that's a very, very important and very, very right, significant. Okay, well, there, there are two. Point. There are two of you and in the, the discussion. That is, yes. William, there are two of you there, so let, let's hear from Paul. Uh, what's to stop us furrowing our own trough in this and, 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 and being able to make these trade deals probably a lot more economically, perhaps, than we do now at the behest of the European Union, Paul? I think it would be a lot harder, um, basically because we're, in a, we're a little island in a great big world, and the competition in that world now is a lot greater than what it was 40, 50 years ago. And I think if we stay in a team, we can combat and fight better for trade than what we can on our own. Because the days of Britain being best have gone. When I was a kid, if something was made in Hong Kong, we laughed at it. If you go to Hong Kong now or China and say this was made in Britain, they'd laugh at you. Well, 80% of our economy is service industries, isn't it? It's banking and finance and all of those things. Yes. We're, not, we're not making anything. So th these, the, 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 these big companies, uh, William, would talk about pulling out, wouldn't they? If, if, if you if look, that... the, the managing director of Hitachi, who's one of the biggest employers in the Northeast, mm. Japanese company and Nissan, have already stated to their employees in writing that there'll be no future investments in the Northeast and that jobs will mm. not be secure. 
And now who supplies the steel to Hitachi and Nissan? Port Talbot. Now, no, in fact, Port Talbot is closing down, unfortunately, and it's partly closed, and it's closing down, unfortunately, because we don't have power to put emergency anti-anti-dumping tariffs on on on, on, China, on cut yes. price st yeah. steel 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 from China, and the European well, Union Trade Commissioner refused to do it. Well, so, you, so but, actually, but you, you, you've, Nissan, got be, you've got to be a little bit more accurate. And so incidentally, Nissan has specifically said that they're going to remain in the European Union, and actually, one of the things which I find absolutely astonishing. They didn't, they didn't say that. So, sorry, 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 I, I missed it. Right, right. Remain in the UK. Uh, hang on a second. Let, let me just talk about some of those big firms. When you're talking about major companies, William Dartmouth, they, they've got staff that they move around Europe. They, 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 they don't sit in London or in, in Edinburgh or Bristol or Leeds. They move around and they want to move freely. If they find that they're curtailed in doing that, they're just going to up sticks and, and, and go to Paris or, 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 or somewhere in the European Union. Or Serbia well, or Montenegro. People in, hang, hang on, Speak, I don't know. People invest in a country for lots and lots of different reasons. In our country, it's because there's the English language, there's, 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 a, there's, a, there's, a, there's, a, there's a time zone which is very convenient, convenient for business, and it's because of the rule of law, the rule of English law, and a contributory factor to that is our membership of the European Union. But I would point out, I would point out that the average for tariffs is only three percent. I would also point out to the gentleman in Sunderland, he was talking about trade agreements. Mm. Trade agreements aren't the be-all and end-all, but the European Union does not have a trade agreement with either China or Japan, and Switzerland has a trade agreement with both China and Japan. You do not need to be part of a large trading bloc in order to sign trade agreements. Paul, but will I, you? I would further make okay, the Okay, let, let Paul come in, because we've only got a few minutes. The only, the only reason Switzerland have their own trade agreements is that the only country in the world that specialises in cuckoo clocks. <laughs> That's the only thing they export. <laughs> Well, well, the, the, they actually export 4.7 times per head of population to the European Union. Actually, what we the, the, than what we do, and and in fact, and in fact, the European uh, the Switzerland ha is is actually has very substantial um, heavy heavy industry. But you're obviously you're obviously a fan of of, of the third of, of the of the movie, the the third man, just as I am. I think I think yeah, <laughs> it, we can come on to films maybe in another program. I've got a few myself. I look forward uh, to it. But but William, when it comes to things like the trade deals, and I do go back. To to where we started. The trade public are complete yes. tra trade deals. People are confused by this, aren't they? And they hear this statistic of Canada, where it's taken seven years and it's only the, the early stages of making that agreement work. It clearly is a problem, isn't it? If you, the UK sets out to try and get trade agreements around the world and does not have the backing or indeed that 500 million uh, no, person market. Well, well, no, it isn't. I don't want to be repetitive. It's not? No, no, it, no, it isn't, because it's more difficult with 28 countries. I don't want to be too repetitive. But Switzerland has trade agreements with China and Japan. But let me make another very, very, very important point. They've got free movement, haven't they? I've got to make a very, very, very important point. Yes, and they tore it up. They've torn up free movement in consequence of a referendum in February 2014. It's people, most people don't realise that. But there's an absolutely critical point which I must share with you, if I may. Because I think it's, because it's, because very, it's, very because it's, because it's absolutely vital at lightning speed. You don't need to have a trade agreement in order to trade, and you don't need to be in the European Union in order to trade. Most people here will have. have have bought and certainly seen Australian wine on s for sale, fully competitive with with French and Italian wine. Australia, not part of the European All right, Union. Paul, Paul, okay, you've had, you've, had a, you've, had a, you've had a good go at it there, Paul Wynnum. Final well, thoughts. Well, basically, what, to this gentleman. Basically, if we all knew what was going to win the half past two race at two o'clock, we'd all back it. You're asking us to gamble to come out. I'm not willing to gamble on my grandkids' future, on your saying so that something might happen when the economy at the moment is pretty right. level, unemployment has been kept down, and we're living a pretty good life. Well, Why try to guys, change it? I'm afraid that the cuckoo clock has beaten us. Uh, so thank you both very much indeed uh, for that input. Thanks to both of you uh, in our time and we in our Bristol studios. Uh, now then, let's have a look at how the poll has been going. Uh, you've been pressing your buttons uh, like mad. Let's see how they have changed uh, over the last 10 minutes or so since last we looked. Uh, the final call on this poll, uh, in or out, we were asking you, Bristol 66 to 34, Cardiff 69 to 31, uh, Leeds 
59 to 41, much more even in Leeds, obviously, and Tyne and Weir, 62% to 38. Make of that what you will, as I say, unscientific, but it's interesting, isn't it, just to see how the various towns and cities are voting. That is about it. Thanks to all our guests in the four cities of Bristol, Cardiff, Leeds and Sunderland, and to all who made the programme happen. Don't know if it's helped you to make your decision on where your vote will go on Thursday. All the local reaction to the result on your city TV channel on Friday. Whatever happens, it's going to be fascinating. For me, Steve Lefebvre, thanks for watching. Bye-bye.